and the lecture at hand is T cells and our recap of the immune system. This is our immune system part three. Just to remind us of where we've been a long time ago, we talked about our skin and mucus being our first line of defense as barriers. We talked about natural killer cells, the inflammatory response, and antimicrobial proteins, all of those being non specific parts of our immune system, they attack everything. Last time we started to break down the third line of defense, which is specific, which means specific defenses for specific pathogens, and we focused a lot of our attention on those B cells. Today, we're going to talk a lot about the T cells. So, what if the attacker gets past all of those B cells in our body? Because remember, it's the job of the B cells to take care of those pathogens. So what if one of those attackers gets past the B cells? You need highly trained assassins to kill off these infected cells. And we have our cytotoxic T cells to the rescue. So. T cells obviously are part of our cell mediated response. They're taking care of our infected cells. So it doesn't matter what pathogen it is, if that pathogen infects a cell, our T cells go to job, go to work. Excuse me. There's two different types of T cells. There's our helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells. Helper T cells do just that. They call on the phone, they call everybody up, they make sure everybody's doing their job, but they're not really doing any heavy lifting. They're not the manual labor guys, but they're key because if they don't tell the other guys what to do, then the other guys don't know where to do their job or how to do their job. So the helper T cells are kind of like the boss of this whole operation. Cytotoxic T cells, they are the ones that specifically attack the infected body cells and make them go through apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. So how are the cells that are infected know they're infected? And how do the other cells around the infected cells know that the infected cell is really infected? Well, what happens so in other words, how are the cells tagged with antigens? What happens is, is we have these proteins inside of the cell that put those antigens on the plasma membrane on the surface. Those proteins are MHC proteins. If you really wanna know the MHC stands for major histocompatibility complex proteins. You don't need to know all that. MHC proteins and you're all good. So the MHC proteins constantly carry little bits of cellular material, in this case, including our antigen. They take the antigen from inside and put it on the plasma membrane. So when it's on the plasma membrane, that's kind of like sending up smoke signals or a huge flag that says, hey, I am in infected, bad, we need to take care of something. That protein, that antigen on the outside is going to alert a T cell, specifically the boss, the helper T cell. Okay, so the T cells, as soon as they see that antigen, on a cell, that T cell will recognize it and get it its shape, okay? And get the shape of that particular antigen. It's key, the T cell gets the shape of that antigen. Key, 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 key piece. Because once that helper T cell has the shape of that antigen, okay, then that helper T cell is gonna go give that shape to the cytotoxic T cell, and it's gonna do its job that we're gonna talk about in a second, but it also gives that shape of the antigen to the B cells. So the B cells, they can start making and make all of those antibodies specific for that same pathogen. Okay, so if this is the first time we are infected by a particular pathogen, 
the helper T cells, the first thing that comes across it, this is the first time we know what the shape of the antigen is. Give that shape to the B cells so they can make specific antibodies for that specific antigen. So without the helper T cells, the cytotoxic T cells never, ever, 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 ever get made. So they can't fight off the infected cells. If we don't have helper T cells, the B cells can't make the specific antibodies, so the pathogen just keeps going and going and going on forever, and we don't have anything to fight it. So although the helper T cell really doesn't do any heavy lifting, and it really is the boss, without the boss, we don't have any specific immune system, and those pathogens completely take over our body. So as you can see, the helper T cells are very, very, very important. So once the cytotoxic T cells are alerted, they destroy the infected cells. What they do, just like it shows here, is they're going to bind to the infected cell, okay? And they're going to release different proteins in. They're gonna bind to the plasma membrane and cause, it to, cause the plasma membrane to start breaking apart. That process, again, is called apoptosis, and it breaks apart, breaks apart, breaks apart, and we recycle all of the different parts of that cell. HIV and AIDS. HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. The biggest thing, and I've kind of alluded to this uh, before in this video, is that HIV infects and destroys helper T cells. It infects the bosses. Remember, so our helper T cells go and take and alert the cytotoxic T cells and give instructions for the B cells to make antibodies for the specific shape. So if we knock that guy out, if we knock out the boss, there's no cytotoxic T cells, there's no plasma B cells with antibodies. So if, they, if HIV attacks and destroys your helper T cells, you're essentially wiping out your specific immune system. So if you don't have a specific immune system, you can die from opportunistic diseases. Death can come from the flu, influenza, pneumonia, or a cancer that your body can normally take care of, pneumonia that your body can normally take care of, the flu that gets you sick but your body can take care of, you now die for those things because you don't have an, a specific immune system. There's no helper T cells. That's how HIV, so you don't necessarily die of AIDS, you die from a secondary and infection because the HIV and the AIDS cause you to not have any immune system. So here's the overall big picture again for our specific parts of everything. Okay, so our antigen, this is our pathogen, is first alerted by the helper T cells. Okay, the helper T cells recognize it. Remember our M H, C proteins, put that antigen on some infected cell. And our helper T cells, they go and alert our B cells, right, humoral response in the fluid. And our B cells are then gonna go make plasma B cells with our antibodies on the inside. And a little bit slower, gonna make those memory B cells with antibodies on the outside. Okay, plasma B cells go and attack the pathogen itself. They bind the, or sorry, the plasma B cells will release the antibodies around the infected path, pathogen. And that macrophage comes over and gobbles everything up, chops everything up, reuses the parts. All the while, the, help, the helper T cells, after they go to these guys, they're gonna go over to the T cells and they're gonna make memory T cells very, very similar. We'll get to that in a second. But the biggest piece here is that they're going to talk to the cytotoxic T cells to go take care of the infected cells. Probably this very cell right here, the very first cell that was infected. 
There are new things that are memory T cells. And again, so if we come across the same thing, our memory B cells will make the plasma B cells. Our memory T cells will make the cytotoxic T cells. So if we have seen that something before, now we have two different things to help us fight against that same, athogen, uh, same pathogen. But again, that's only if we've seen that specific pathogen before. If we haven't seen it, we don't have these and we don't have these. So our key attributes of the immune system, okay? It's specific, there's parts of it that are very specific, antigen to antibody. You can't mix different antibodies for antigens. One antibody specifically shaped for one specific shape antigen. But also in the beauty of it is its ability is so diverse. It can't, our immune, your immune system is different than my immune system, which is different than everybody else's in the, in the, from the standpoint of you have been exposed to different pathogens than I have, than your neighbor has, and a person living in Adelaide, Australia has. We've all have, because our immune system is so diverse, it can react to different of uh, antigens. It has a huge memory with memory B cells and memory T cells that last a long time to help with that rapid secondary response. We don't even get sick the second time because of that. And then last but not least, our ability to, to distinguish ourself from our non-self. For us to be able to recognize what's an invader, a pathogen, something that's bad versus something that's good. We wouldn't want our immune system to start attacking cells in our heart, that would be bad. So the ability to recognize us from something bad is very important. And that is all she wrote on the immune system. It's like this and like that and like this, Anna. It's like that and like this and like that, Anna. It's like this. So just chill to the next episode.